welcome to the final section of this series on Biblical Astronomy where we discover how it is the heavens declare the glory of God. And what we're finding is as we simply take these star names and allow these star names to be interpreted uh, that is translated into uh, the English language that we can understand, then we find that these indeed declare the glory of God by showing us the person and work of the Lord Jesus Christ. What we've seen thus far then in these first constellations were those depictions of the Lord Jesus Christ as our redeeming shepherd. What we see here in the second four constellations um, are the depictions of him as the one who has risen, having accomplished our work, uh, on the cross, and yet now as that one who is in the heavens and continues to bless and uphold his people, and yet there's a new chapter, a final chapter in history, as we see it in scripture, also mirrored in the night sky, that in the final four constellations here, as we see Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, and Leo, we'll see the Lord Jesus Christ coming back as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to bring judgment to this world and to establish his kingdom. So we'll begin then with uh, Taurus, which is the first of these four constellations which conclude this series. Uh, and so now, as such, we'll see Christ as the judge. We'll see Taurus uh, then uh, as the Christ coming in his glorious coming. And as such, what we want to do again is give a bit of a thumbnail sketch as, as to what to expect in this particular constellation. In Taurus, we see the depiction of Jesus Christ as the coming judge of the earth to rule as the king of glory, coming forth as light, this is the word Orion, which means coming forth as light, from the heaven with one heel bruised, this is the, a star named Saith in the, in the heel of Orion, and the other crushing, that is to say, the, the one foot has the heel that is bruised, the other is crushing because the, the star name in that foot is regal. So he is crushing. So this is the, the same depictions that we see um, identified in Scorpio's Ophiuchus, the, the serpent restrainer, now identified with Orion, which is found in this constellation group. Uh, so now he is fiery wrath is poured out on his enemies as his people are protected in the day of judgment. All this as we examine these images and the star names that uh, are given, which unfold the, the drama, really, of our Savior's return. Now, um, again, we look at the four constellations that are involved with this star group. Each constellation, as we have said, has one major uh, constellation with three other constellations called deacons, which uh, are affiliated with it. So with Taurus, this raging bull, we're depicting uh, the fiery judgment of our Savior. We have also Ariga, which is this gentle shepherd. We have also Orion, which is th that fierce uh, fighter here who is the prince coming as light. We also have this uh, fiery river, which is called Eridanus. So with these uh, images before us, we also have uh, the names that are uh, given to us, simply taking these star names and uh, uh, translating them, then we have this kind of statement. Here is the bull, or the wild ox, coming and, and ruling, who delivers. He is the head, uh, or the chief. He is the governor. He is the captain and the leader. He is the... Uh, and then we have the Pleiades, which speaks of the congregation of the judge. Uh, that little star group nestled in the shoulder of Taurus. Pleiades also has uh, the, the, the name which means uh, the doves, since Pleiades actually is, is plural for doves. The original name is Kaima, which is the Hebrew word found in Job chapter 9 and chapter 38, also Amos chapter 5. Kaima, which means the congregation or the family group. So again, the congregation of the judge, the ruler, also means the booths. The center, Christ being the center uh, in the midst of his people. Uh, the wounded or slain, the congregated and belonging to the judge. So even though he comes back in his power and glory, all the world shall remember what he had done in order to accomplish our redemption. So we see still the, the remembrance that he is the lamb that was slain. 
But now we go to the next uh, um, constellation here, or deacon as we have said, Orion. Orion means coming forth as light. Other star names um, that depict Orion and, uh, and are assigned to Orion in ancient star charts are the strong one or a hero. This is he who triumphs, the light of heaven and also the prince. Uh, the coming of the branch, a star names that are within Orion, uh, the foot that crushes, uh, and then also in the other foot, the one that is bruised. Coming quickly, the wounded one, dividing as a sacrifice. And then Eridanus, we said this fiery river is here, that's called the river of the judge. We see the river after part. We see uh, the bent down and the flowing, speaking of, the, again, this fiery lava-like river that comes in judgment. And finally, the last deacon here is Ariga, which is uh, the shepherd. Simply that's what the name means is shepherd. And uh, we see then depiction of, of our Savior, who is both the good and the great and the chief shepherd, depicted in, uh, in, in Scripture. Um, then we have other star names in Ariga, the she-goat, the chain of goats, the kids, the wounded and the slain, and we see that in his heel here. And uh, again, another name meaning wounded. So here is this shepherd. We're reminded again that though he comes back in judgment, this is the good shepherd who laid down his life. Yes, he is the chief shepherd, and he will return to this world, but all the world will remember what he did to accomplish our salvation. So with this uh, before us here, what we want to do is bathe ourselves in Scripture again to see how the Scriptures give us uh, the interpretation, the proper understanding of these star names. And again, we've said that the, the reason we do this is because it, it's certainly only logical that as we understand that these are the star names that have been authored by God in their most ancient, pure sense, then our best understanding is to go to the author and the only other uh, inspired source that we know, and that is the scriptures today. So we go to the scriptures now, beginning with uh, this star group under Taurus. Again, we'll look at those star names that are assigned to Taurus, not only the, uh, the one that means the bull, but the ancient names as well, um, which uh, speaks of Rimu, which is the wild ox, uh, also called the unicorn in King James Version, really gives you more of a picture of a rhinoceros, really one that cannot be tamed. And the Lord refers to him that way in, in uh, Job chapter 39. We'll address that in just a moment. But also there's a word uh, assigned to this star group called Shur, S-H-U-R, which means the coming and the ruling. Also Isis, uh, the one who delivers. Also Apis, which means the head or the chief. So these are all names that we'll address with these scriptures. Job 39, verses 9 through 12. Will the unicorn, this is the word for Remu, will the unicorn be willing to serve thee, or wilt thou leave thy labor unto him? Wilt thou believe him, that, thou, that he will bring home thy seed, and gather it into thy barn? Uh, why don't you leave that to the, to the rhinoceros, and see how well he'll serve you. So this is the kind of image we see here uh, as these, this untamable wild animal. And the Lord comes back now for rule and to be in subjection to, to no one as he sets up his sovereign rule. Uh, continuing on this theme, Deuteronomy chapter 33, 33 verse 17, his glory is like the firstling of his bullock and his horns are like the horns of unicorns. Again, this word verimu. With them he shall push the people together to the ends of the earth. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 17, as um, Moses is giving a blessing to his people. Uh, same theme, Psalm 24, verse 7 through 10. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lift up ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. He is the King of glory, Selah. Psalm 24, verses 7 through 10, as he comes back in battle. Uh, he'll be met you know, with, with the nations that follow the Antichrist, but because he is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, he shall overcome them. Uh, Isaiah chapter 13, verses 11 through 15, is where we have 
uh, this depiction of him coming back into the world at a time when he judges the world. And I will punish the world for their evil and the, the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. This is Isaiah chapter 13, verses 11 through 15. Uh, same theme, Jude chapter 1, uh, verses 14 and 15. Actually, there is only one chapter in Jude, so we say Jude chapter, uh, uh, brother, uh, verses 14 and 15. And Enoch prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their hard speeches spoken against him. Jude chapter, uh, uh, Jude, rather, verses 14 and 15. This is going to be an important verse to remember because the Lord uh, also has a very special star group in here called the Pleiades, uh, and it really sounds very much like the Lord is giving us a statement of him coming back with his congregation. Pleiades meaning the congregation of the judge. Um, and so, of course, Enoch was a prophet. Uh, that was uh, in the, in, uh, the er among the early patriarchs before Noah's time, really, where he would have been bringing this kind of fiery language uh, to a people that, uh, that seemed to be indifferent to judgment at that time. Now we're moving to, uh, in Taurus, to the, the, the next star name, that is Aldebaran in the bullseye. So far we have seen um, uh, Taurus defined for us, now we're looking at, uh, at a star name within um, Taurus, and that this is in the eye. And this uh, name, Aldebaran, means the governor, the captain, or the leader. Uh, and so it is Psalm 2, verse 9. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Uh, Psalm 2, verse 9. Um, same theme, Psalm 22, verse 28. For the kingdom is the Lord's, he is the governor among the nations. Again, speaking to this star name, which means governor, captain, leader. Uh, same theme, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. The government shall be upon his shoulder. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. To order it, to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. Now we're looking at uh, the next star name, which is Pleiades. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Now, I've, I've said already that Pleiades is that name which means the congregation of the judge. Uh, Pleiades, the actual interpretation of that, one more time, is that of, of um, the plural for dove. So we have doves that are spoken of here. Um, and this also is in agreement with Scripture, allows us to see the beauty uh, of, of being in His congregation. The Lord refers to us as doves. Uh, we see that image of the dove in the, in the ark, goes out, finds no, no uh, rest for the sole of her foot. Uh, and so this is a, a very beautiful picture of God's people. Uh, yet the, the original name, uh, even before Pleiades, which speaks of doves, is Kaima. This is the uh, Hebrew word, at least in Job chapter 9, also Job 38, Amos chapter uh, 5, where we uh, are spoken of as the congregation. So uh, so we'll be looking at, at, at both words, both that which depicts doves and that which is the congregation of the judge. So it is, um, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. And then we see in Isaiah 60, uh, verses uh, 3 through 8, who are these that fly as a cloud, and as the doves to their windows? So another a very gentle uh, portrait of God's people uh, coming back with him as he comes back into this world. Um, Pleiades, again, uh, Matthew chapter uh, 10, verse 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents, and harmless as doves. So again, referring to his own people and that portrait is doves. Um, uh, we have Job referring to God when he says, He maketh Arcturus, Orion, and Pleiades, a, a name 
that was quite uh, commonly known. That is, in that day, uh, a word meaning congregation uh, to Job. He could see the congregation in that word, kaima. Uh, and the chambers of the south. Again, God made you Arcturus, Orion, and Pleiades, and the chambers of the south. And uh, most uh, notably is uh, the, where God himself, the author of the star names, gives us this name as well. Canst thou bind the sweet influences of the Pleiades, or loose the bands of Orion? Job chapter 38, verse uh, 31. In Taurus, then, we're seeing the image of, of the Pleiades. Seek him that maketh the seven stars. Now this is literally, again, Pleiades. This is Amos in chapter 5, speaking about Kaima, the same word that was used in Job 9 and Job 38. Uh, seek him that maketh the seven stars, Pleiades, and Orion, and turneth the shadow of death into the morning, and maketh the day dark with night. The Lord is his name. On Amos 5 and verse 8. Um, continuing with Pleiades, Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Again, speaking about uh, that congregation of the judge. Uh, Psalm uh, 1 and verse 5. Uh, again, speaking to this uh, same theme, My praise shall be of thee, the Lord Jesus says prophetically, My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. Here's that congregation before him. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. Psalm 22 and verse 25. Um, the, the, the language of the resurrection as the Lord Jesus uh, leaves that suffering behind in, in uh, Psalm 22, verses uh, 1 through 21, and then with verse 22 and on, he speaks of that glory of uh, resurrection and being in the midst of his people. Here is uh, a word that speaks to that as well. The next star name is Al Sion, which is the center. It's why the, where the Lord loves to be, in the midst of his people. Psalm 46, verses 5 and 6. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early, the heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. Psalm 46, verses 5 and 6. Uh, that's the kind of help you want to have right? in the coming day uh, when the Lord uh, rises up as the judge of this world. Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 through 18. For by him were all things created, speaking to this word again in the center, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, and he is the head of the body, the church, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Colossians 1, verses 16 through 18. So the center, in the sense that he is the center or the preeminent one in our midst. Now we uh, have um, a, an interesting name. Interesting because it's in the tip of the horn of Taurus, and the tip of the horn is also touching uh, the foot of the shepherd. So El Nath, really, it's not discernible whether it is a starling that belongs to Taurus or to a ride of the shepherd. Uh, and we can see, really, the, the genius of that, even, as the, the name means wounded. Here is the one coming as the judge, and here is the one who took our judgment, uh, the shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep. So again, images here, yes, of judgment, but not without remembering what he did for us as our uh, as the shepherd who gave himself coming again as the chief shepherd but we remember it was the good shepherd who laid down his life for the likes of us now we continue in taurus but he was wounded for our transgressions speaking now of el nath that name he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes his scourging. We are healed. Isaiah 53 and verse 5. Uh, speaking of that word, the wounded or the slain, Elnath. Now we turn to another word, um, Hi, uh, Hyades. This is in the face of Taurus, and that means the congregated. So that word, the congregated, is before us. Uh, and we, uh, we want to address that. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. This is John chapter 14 and verse 3, where the Lord speaks of coming back and gathering us to himself. 
Uh, the next star name in Taurus is uh, Palisium, which means belonging to the judge. Uh, this is a, Sol a song of Solomon. My beloved is mine, and I am his. His banner over me is love. Wonderful to know that we belong to him. Uh, now uh, uh, we're, we're looking at Orion. Uh, this is the, the first deacon we're looking at in Taurus, and this is the one which means coming forth as light. Um, he is also Chesil, which means the strong one, uh, the hero. He's also Hagath. This is he who triumphs. He's also Urana, which means, which means the light of heaven. Um, so with these names here, also uh, there's other names that speak of him as the prince. We have this depiction of the one, Orion, who is the one coming forth as light. Uh, and so wonderful to have this beautiful picture as um, this name so well known among the ancient patriarchs. So it is we have in Job 9, verse 9, God is the one who maketh Arcturus and Orion and the Pleiades in the chambers of the south or the constellations of the south. This is Job speaking to his companions. And now we uh, turn to Job chapter 38 where God himself, who named the stars, um, poses this question to Job, Canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pleiades or loose the bands of Orion? Both of these star groups here in, uh, in Taurus. And so these are our names here before us that the Lord himself, who authored these names, presents now in the book of Job in chapter 38, verse 31. Now uh, Taurus, still continuing in Orion, uh, Psalm 19, verse 5, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race, seeing that Orion is also translated as uh, the strong one or the hero. Uh, Psalm 104, same thing, who covers thyself with light as with a garment, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. Psalm 104, verse 2, here's the one coming as light, and that's the verse uh, describing him there. Now in Matthew 24, verse 27, um, For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Matthew 24, 27 says, Indeed, he is coming forth as light. And that's a clear uh, depiction that you can have of Orion. Uh, we continue in the same theme, Psalm 47, verse 1, O clap your hands, all ye people, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. And so this is now a time of, uh, this is he who triumphs, another name, Hagat. And so we're seeing verses to the, that speak to that now. Colossians 2, verse 15, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Colossians 2, 15. This is he who triumphs. Uh, John chapter 1, verse 9, speaking again of, the, of, of him as the light, that was the true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world. John chapter 1, verse 9, it's called the light of heaven. Um, now Orion is um, still before us as we look at John chapter 8, verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of light. John chapter 8, verse 12. Um, we continue uh, to see um, these beautiful portraits of, uh, of the light, the one coming forth of light. We have another uh, star name now, uh, which is, is still in Orion, uh, a very well-named star uh, entitled Betelgeuse. The coming of the branch is what that name means. Uh, in that day, shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. This is Isaiah 4.2. Uh, Betelgeuse again, the coming of the branch. Arise and shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 3, the coming of the branch. Same theme, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and the king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Jeremiah chapter 23 
and verse 5. Still looking at the um, constellation of Orion, another star name in Orion is Regal, and that is the foot that crushes. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. So Psalm 91 verse 13 reminds us that there is a foot that is going to crush that serpent. And uh, we see that depicted in Orion. Yet in the other, uh, um, actually the right leg, you'll see a star name in Orion of the one uh, star name that means bruised. It is the word saith. It is exactly the same star name that we see in the serpent restrainer where we see also his heel is bruised as he restrains the serpent. Uh, beautiful images, all depicting the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So we have the foot that is treading under, uh, but we also have this foot now, containing the star, um, uh, bruised. Bellatrix now is another star name in Orion, coming quickly. Uh, he which testifieth of these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Revelations 22 and verse 20. Um, now uh, the, the star name Al-Nitak, the wounded one. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Isaiah 53 verse 5. And so, again, remembrance of the, of, of the suffering of our Savior. Though he comes back again in judgment, there's uh, a recognition of that. Psalm 40, verse 6 through 8, looking again at this, uh, this word now, mintaka, which means dividing as a sacrifice. This is a star name also in Orion, mintaka, dividing as a sacrifice. Sacrifice and offering, thou didst not desire. Mine ears hast thou opened. Burn offering and sin offering thou hast not required. Then said I, Lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. A prophecy in Psalm 40, verse 6 through 8, regarding our Savior, who knew that he would be the one to be the sacrifice um, that fulfilled all these shadowed types of sacrifices. Again, the same theme. Isaiah 53, verses 10 through 12. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see uh, the travail of his soul, it says, and shall be satisfied, because he hath poured out his soul unto death. Now we're just moving through sections of verses there, but this gives us uh, a beautiful portrait of the one who is... Uh, slain for us, the one who became our sacrifice. We move now to a, a new deacon, a new uh, a group of stars in Taurus called Eridanus. Eridanus means the river of the judge. Daniel chapter 9 verses, uh, excuse me, Daniel chapter 7 verses 9 and 10 says, I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as a burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. The judgment was set and the books were opened. Daniel chapter 7 verses 9 and 10. Eridanus will be holding to this theme for um, a short while as we see the verses that speak of this fiery river. Revelations chapter 20 verses 10 and also verse 15. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Revelations chapter 20, verses 10 and 15. Uh, we continue now as we're looking at uh, a star name in Eridanus, uh, Achenar, which means the river after part. Psalm 50, verses 1 to 3. The mighty God, even the Lord, has spoken and called the earth. Our God shall come and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous round about him. Psalm 50, verses 1 to 3. Achenar again, saying uh, the theme. We continue with this theme. Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. 
mercy and truth shall go before thy face. So this is in contrast to another verse we'll see which uh, removes uh, mercy and truth. If we'll not have his mercy and truth, which went before his justice and judgment, then we see a very different kind of, of result. We see uh, what it is to be without that protection. Psalm 97, verses 2 and 3. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. A fire goeth before him and burneth up his enemies round about. Psalm 97, verse, uh, verse 2 and 3. So continuing with uh, uh, Aragonus, seeing now a, uh, another star named Aragonus, Cursa, means bent down. Uh, the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of men. Psalm 11, verse 4. Again, a fiery judgment spoken of in this psalm as the Lord looks down from heaven. Again, bent down, giving a sense of the Lord. Uh, his, his eyes uh, looking upon humanity, the Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. We know the result of that in Psalm 14 too. They were all gone aside. There's none that doeth good. No, not one. Uh, Zorak now is another star name in Eridonis. It means flowing. And Psalm 46 verses 4 through 11 says, There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. God is in the midst of her. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved, he uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Psalm 46, verses 4 through 11. Uh, now we are still continuing in, in Tars, but now we have come to that star group in uh, Ariga, which is a, 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 the name of a deacon, uh, this... Uh, final deacon that we have here, Ariga is the shepherd. It means a shepherd. It's a deacon now. And so we have concerned, concerned ourselves with the shepherd all uh, through these constellations. Uh, as the redeeming shepherd, we see the Lord Jesus in John 10, uh, or the Psalm 22, verse 16, for the dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, they pierced my hands and my feet. And John 10, verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Now that was what we we uh, covered in the, the first four constellations, that picture of our redeeming shepherd. But here, since we have Ariga, we're reviewing that now, as we see the second four constellations, which we've already covered, um, spoke of our risen shepherd. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Speaking of a risen shepherd, who takes us right through the valley of death, fearless since he is with us and he has removed the sting from death, robbed the grave of its victory. Hebrews 13.20 speaks of the shepherd. Uh, God brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep. And so as we look at Ariga, the shepherd, now we come to that one who is now the returning shepherd, and that's the scene we see here now as the shepherd. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and the king of glory shall come in. Psalm 24, verse 9. And also in 1 Peter 5, 4. Mm -hmm. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. 1 Peter 5, 4. Excuse me. Uh, now we continue uh, in, uh, in Cap Capella, which is another name in uh, Ariga. Now showing this one who gently is caring for those in uh, his possession. Behold, the Lord God will come. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the, uh, the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. Isaiah 40, verses 10 and 11. Gentle words for, <clears throat> for such a shepherd in such a time of judgment. Chain of goats here. Uh, and so that is the picture given to us. John six thirty seven says, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. So it's as if we have this chain of goats depicting those that he is going to uh, protect and they'll, they'll not be released from, uh, from his custody. They'll not be plucked out of his hand. And so we can be very grateful for this language here, that he'll not cast us out. 
uh, again, now we have uh, uh, Haide and Gedi, which means the kids, another star name in Ariga, suffer the little children to come to me. So these are the kids, that is, uh, those that are, are in their youth. Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. And he took them up in his arms, and he put his hand upon them, and blessed them. And you know, you as you look at this image here of Ariga, he is a seated shepherd uh, with uh, those goats with those lambs in, uh, in his arms and uh, gives us that picture of a very gentle shepherd caring for his own even in this time of judgment. Still in Ariga, we see this star name El Nath. You say, well, that was the same one we looked at here in Taurus. In fact, it's the same star. <clears throat> As we said, not distinguishable whether it belongs to the horn which wounds or to the foot that indeed was wounded. Remember uh, uh, where we have the statement uh, that's given to us that uh, it shall bruise thy head, but uh, the seed of the woman will bruise thy head, but thou shalt bruise his heel. And so here in the very heel of the shepherd we have that wound in there. Beautiful portrait uh, orchestrated um, by the Lord who has put this, uh, this marvelous scene in the heavens to remind us of our good shepherd. Uh, Elnath, again, that, that star name, which means the wounded or the slain. Um, that star name that is also shared with Taurus. Isaiah 53, 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Uh, beautiful language here concerning our Savior. Elnath, the same theme here. Zechariah 13, verse 6, And one shall say unto him, What are these wounds in thine hands? And then he shall answer those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Zechariah 13, verse 6. Um, another name in uh, Ariga also means wounded. Um, Ayuk is the, is the name. Um, Isaiah 50, verse 6, where we have that prophetic language of the Lord Jesus. I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. Isaiah 50, verse 6. Beautiful language again concerning our shepherd and what he was willing to do to accomplish our salvation. Uh, Ayak again wounded. Luke chapter 24, verses 25 to 27, where he's speaking to those sorrowing disciples on the road to Emmaus. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Luke 24, verses 25 through 27. So we have concluded uh, the depiction here of Taurus and these star names here, and we've bathed ourselves in scripture, so to speak, as, as we see how these star names unfold the beauties of our Savior coming again in power and glory and judgment, uh, uh, coming before him in a fiery judgment, but all the while the remembrance of the one who took our judgment upon himself. So let's continue then with the next constellation before us in this uh, final trilogy, final uh, section of our trilogy, that is to say, as we see our returning shepherd. Here in Gemini, we see that he is depicted as his rule.